Wake up, everybody! Welcome to Navy SEAL Blog Talk Radio. I'm your host, David Rutherford. As a behavioral training specialist, motivational speaker, author, and life coach, my mission in life is to help you discover the behavioral truths behind what it takes for you to succeed in any environment imaginable. So stand by and let me help you embrace your fears, forge your self-confidence, and learn to live the team life. Hoo-ya! All right. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. All right, everybody, I want you to right off the bat right now, are you a CrossFitter? Are you a triathlete? Are you a kayaker, a mountain biker, a yoga maniac, or some badass jujitsu Brazilian master? Who are you, and what are you doing in your life? Why? What What forces you to get out and, and, and just start crushing yourself? What What forces you? What is the inspiration that gets you off your butt in the middle of the, the day or the morning at, at, at oh dark 30 or uh, on the weekends after? you've been partying all night on Fridays, what inspires you to get off your ass, get out there and just punish yourself, just just absolutely bring the pain on your body and in your heart and in your mind you know, to, to where you have that soreness, that, that unbelievable, ridiculous, crazy soreness that hits you uh, on the second day after in your the tops of your quads or your butt, your glutes or your back. Or, or, you know, that, that just, just the burn, the ache, the pain, or, or, or better yet, you know, what is the challenge for you? Why are you doing this? I mean, why are you challenging yourself to, 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 to go beyond the norms? Or is it, is it that you want to cross the finish line first or you want to win something or is it, or is it the sheer distance you feel like traveling? Do you, do you, why, what makes you want to do a hundred miles at a time? All right. Or, or better yet, what is it? Is it the joy? Is it the happiness? Is it the, whoa? <laughs> is it the thing that the elation of knowing that you're you're getting ready to finish something in such a way that it's just going to be absolutely awesome? I mean, what is it? Is it it knowing that that you're becoming better, knowing that you're improving? What is it, folks? What is it about you that makes you want to train? <laughs> because there is something that happens to every single one of us. Every single one of us out there that when you put your your body, your mind, and your spirit in motion, something happens to you. We become transformed. We become life. That's right, folks. We become life. When we're alive and, and training hard, the beauty and the horror of our, of our known limits and our known struggles, it, 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 becomes, it becomes so amazing that this gift, is, this, this gift, this beautiful gift, or, or some people might think it's a burden, but this beautiful gift of, of, of this absolute necessity for our existence just kind of covers us like this this wave of, of inspiration, this wave of, of just this feeling to be real, to be alive, to be trained. <laughs> All right. So, so if everybody, if you haven't figured out now, this show, folks, is all about training. All right. So, if you're a training maniac out, out there, good on you. If you suck at training, then this is the show for you. All right. This is the one that's going to help you get squared away. This is the one that's going to make you feel like there isn't anything you can't do, that you're going to start training tomorrow. You're going to cr- come up with the most unbelievable training regiment you've ever felt in your life. And you're going to go, you're going to set the course, you're going to start this schedule, and you're going to begin to crush yourself in such a way that it just, it's going to make you feel, like I said, alive, real, full of life, because that's what it's about, right? You're above dirt, folks. Everybody out there who's listening to me right now, guess what, little secret? You're above dirt. And that's an awesome thing to feel, folks. But what, how, how does it improve? How do we get there? Because training plays a massive role in this feeling in your life. It plays a massive role in how you feel. And especially it plays a massive role in your ability to live the team life. To live the life of being on a team, to live an oriented lifestyle that is all surrounded about the fact that nobody does it alone, folks. That's the deal. That's the reality that we face. So, so on today's show on Navy SEAL Blog Talk Radio, we are going to literally, we're going to first, as we always do, we're going to define training. 
and we're going to get everybody on the same sheet of music on what training's all about. Then we're going to absolutely talk about why training is so critical in your life. And then also, you know, what how it, it improves your ability to live the team life by by being a, a, a training maniac. I mean, it's just really, I mean, that's an awesome thing you that's an awesome thing that you need to do, folks. I mean, it's a it it is what it is. So Listen, once we get through that, then we're going to talk about why Navy SEAL training and plays such a major role in forging a SEAL and, and becoming better and the teams themselves and, and, and just how, you know, SEAL training is considered one of the most difficult uh, training regiments on the planet and, and, and why, why we do that, why, why you need to do it. And I'm not just talking about the SEAL teams. I'm talking about special operations community and, 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 and whether it's Green Berets or MARSOC or, or it's, it, you know, all the amazing guys, the stellar people from SOF out there and, and even regular infantry or whomever, just people that are pushing themselves to train at that next highest level, all the MMA fighters out there, all the professional athletes who understand that the beauty of training and what it does, how it transforms you in life. We're going to talk a little bit about that. And then and then finally, we're going to get into the frog logic concept, right? And, and if you're not familiar with the frog logic concept, the frog logic concept is, is, is basically, it's my philosophy, right? And it's the philosophy based on 20 years of personal discovery. And this is me searching uh, tall, tall and far and, and, and from all the way from the lacrosse fields of Penn State to, to the frigid waters of the Pacific Ocean getting hammered in buds to the mountains of Afghanistan to the shores of Haiti, right? This is me figuring out what about the human condition enables us to succeed in any environment imaginable. And guess what that is, folks? It's training. Training allows you to succeed in any environment. Training makes you become uh, uh, elevated in your dreams and you're finding out what your purposes are. That's train. And, you know, it's pretty simple in life. There's two kinds of people, folks. There's trained and untrained, and that's it. So if you're not trained or you haven't been working on your training, your training's bad, then I'm going to share with you four concepts that are from the Frog Logic concept and in the Team Life Motivational Talk I give. And I give this all around the country as a motivational speaker for corporations and kids and kids' organizations. I give this thing. It's called the Team Life. And we're going to talk about mission number two today, uh, training. And, and in that, so mission and the four concepts within that mission are mission concept one, nobody's born elite. Concept two, you got to eliminate comfort zones. Concepts three, you got to train hard, right? And concept four, training never ends. So we're going to go through that. And, 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 you know, this is an amazing thing that we're in the middle of right now, folks. I mean, this is, we're in a series right now that's all about living the team life and what that means and and how it can benefit you in your life about being totally committed to the greater good and, and how you push yourself forward in life. And so I've done two shows already on, on Navy SEAL Blog Talk Radio. Uh, two weeks ago, I introduced you to the team life concept. And then last week, we talked about commitment where we re- we had Jason Redman, the founder of Wounded Wear, a Navy SEAL, been shot in the face and in the body multiple times and, and, and his theories behind commitment. And we also shared with you the Medal of Honor story Mike about Mike Monsoor who jumped on a grenade for his buddies in, in Iraq. I mean, true, the, the true definition of commitment. And, and today we're going to talk about training too, and I'll define it here with a ne- another Medal of Honor story from our, our unit that will really exemplify what training can do for you in the moment, in the battle of life, right? Because that's what everybody needs to recognize out there. All you got to understand, folks, that we are in the combat of life right now. As you're sitting here listening to me, there are things that are happening around you, around your life right now that are that are changing, that are evolving. This this negative insurgency that is coming at you in all different directions, whether it's your taxes, whether it's your mortgage, whether it's your relationships, whether it's your your children or or even your, your physical nature. Maybe you're so out of shape that you have trouble walking a mile, man. That's the negative insurgency. So today on this show, we are going to focus on training and how to change those behavioral patterns, how to change your life. So it makes, so all of a sudden you can start today and start getting yourself squared away, right? So you can start learning how to embrace your fears, forge your self-confidence and by all means, learn to live the team life. All right. 
And once we finish that, folks, then we're going to take a short break, and uh, well, then we'll come back, and we're going to have callers. We've got a special guest that's going to be on the reach, uh, uh, on the show today, a guy who is one of my closest friends and, and is an absolute master when it comes to training. His name's Brad Christian, and he's the owner of the Adventure Operations Group and really just an amazing human being, knows about training your body, your mind, and your spirit, and we're going to get him to talk about all those things. And then, and then and we want you to call in, too, at 760 913 Four one three zero you seven six zero nine one three four one three zero. You can call in. I'll take questions, or you can you know guess what? Hit me up on Twitter, folks, because I'm all over social media. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Google Plus. I'm on you, you name it. LinkedIn. I'm out there, and I'm sharing with you. I'm sharing the the frog logic concept for you, so you can embrace this. And uh, you can also find us at TeamFrogLogic.com. So let's get started. All right, enough definition. Everybody on the same shooting week. Now, I, I took this from my favorite source, and it, I think it's everybody else's favorite source, and if it isn't, go pack sand, is Wikipedia, right? Because it's just general good place to start. It's good knowledge. It's good to go. So here we go. Training. Training is the acquisition of knowledge, skills, and competencies as a result of teaching of vocational or practical skills and knowledge that relate to specific useful competencies, Boy, that was a mouthful. Training has specific goals of improving one's capability, capacity, productivity, and performance. It, pr it forms the core of apprenticeships and provides the backbone of content and institutes of technology, also known as technical colleges or polytechnics. I don't know where that came in, but it, it made some kind of sense. In addition to the basic training required for a trade, occupation, or profession, observers of the labor market who recognize as of 2008 the need to continue training beyond initial qualifications, training beyond initial qualifications to maintain upgrade, update skills throughout the work life. Folks, that's the deal. That's, that's a pretty good definition. I mean, that really is. That gets you going. That gets you thinking about, on, about what training is, not just this core thing that you learn once in your life and then you get to throw it over your shoulder and you're done, right? I mean, that's just absurd, folks. Training is something that goes on and goes on and goes on. Well, let me tell you a story from our community, all right? There's a guy out there. His name's Mike Thornton. And in 1972, Mike Thornton was in Vietnam for his fourth time. And, and, and back then, they used to deploy for uh, a year at a time. I mean, nowadays, we deploy for these little seven-month deployments, and we get a little sand in our ears, and we start going, oh, I got sand in my And we got to come home, right? Back then, they would do a year at a time. Well, you know, kind of a side note, when you ask the guys from World War II, the UDT guys, right, you go, oh, how long did you guys stay over there? They go, well, we didn't think we were coming back at all. They, they kind of help you put it in perspective. But so he's over there on his fourth deployment, and, and a young LT, this amazing guy, comes up to him and says, hey, Mike, we got to go on this recon on up up on, on the border north south of uh, Vietnam to, to check out this installation and see what's going on so they went in and they got inserted wrong because the the ship that shot them a declination was off so but did they that once they swam in a 2,000 meters offshore and swam into the, the shoreline did they quit because they were in the wrong spot no they Charlie Mike they continue mission because they, they, they relied on their training they continued on so they went through all this they they humped into the, the, the jungle and they next thing you know they were in this military installation they had literally walked into the center of this thing. And they said, well, let's get out of Dodge. So they got out of Dodge, went back to the shoreline to wait through a cycle of daylight to get extract that night to come out in another place, another location. Well, when they were on the beach, they got contacted by an, an, an enemy patrol who they ended up taking out. And then as the one guy was running back to the village, uh, Big Mike Thornton knocked him down with two good shots. And, and, and next thing you know, 50 people from a close by village erupted and just in gunfire. And they got into this palacious gunfight, man. I mean, this thing was insane. And you talk to Big Mike and he, he talks about, you know, it, it was so fast and furious that he, it was just like, I mean, it was overwhelming. He was growing from one dune to the next and just taking guys out left and right. And in fact, it got so close that they threw a grenade at him and the grenade blew up and almost, you know, six pieces of shrapnel in him. And, and after three and a half hours, you know, they, they were like, all right, Holy cow, this is just getting worse. More guys showed up and ended up, you know, hammering another 150 guys in the tree line opened up on them. We're talking rocket propelled grenades, AK-47s and all this stuff. And it, they're like, man, we this is not good. We only have five guys here and we're getting pummeled and we're almost out of ammo. We've been going, hey, we need to get in the ocean and swim for it. Right then, they're, they go running down to the beach, and, and they're waiting for the, the Navy SEAL lieutenant who was leading the mission to come running back down, and, and he didn't show up, but the radio operator stumbles on Mike and looks up, and he says, hey, guess what? Lieutenant's dead. 
Did he freak out right there? Did he lose his cool? Did he did he quit? Did he swim for it? Negative. He picked up his rifle, Mike Thornton picked up his rifle and ran 500 meters back across open thing to go retrieve his teammate. He recalled on, you know, he, he said that there's no way we don't leave a man behind. And, and as he's getting enemy fire shooting all around him, you know, bullets, zing, zing, you know, sand flying up just like the movies. You ask him, you know, hey, man, how come you didn't die that day? And he'll say, well, easy, the Lord was with me, period. That's it. That's his only explanation. And I love that explanation, right? So he gets up and there's the other lieutenant and he's been shot through the head. He's in bad shape. So what does he do? He, he bends over, picks this guy up turns to run, and then an 8-inch shell from the naval ship that's out there fires, hits, you know, 20 meters and blows them sky high. They're in the air 30 feet. They land, and and they, he thinks he's like, he's trying to knock it off. Meanwhile, everybody's still shooting at him, and all of a sudden he looks up, and the LT looks at him, and he opens up his good eye, and he says, hey, Big Mike, you all right, buddy? And he's like, you SOB, and that just filled him with, you know, energy. So he picks him up, runs the 500 meters back down across the open terrain right before he hits the shoreline, gets shot in the calf, spins him around, right? Now he's got to climb, go, you know, swim out to sea, carrying the LT who's been shot through the head, carrying the other guy who's been shot, and as they're swimming out, the one, the one healthy guy gets shot through the hip, and now he's got to carry him out. So he's got three down guys that he's responsible for. They swim 2,000 meters offshore, and in the swim out, the the, the naval ships had left them because they thought they were all dead. So they left them. They look on. Now he's out there, and they're looking. They, the other guys look at, at Mike, and they're like, "What do we do now?" And he's like, "Well, we kind of pouring south, and we swim for it." So he swam for another three and a half hours. With these guys, I mean, literally the LT on his back, the other guy in front of him, him doing the breast and him dragging along the other guy. Think about that, folks. So this six-hour ordeal, seven-hour ordeal, this guy has the intestinal fortitude to go all the way through it. Finally, because there was a SEAL on that ship who said, no way, they're not dead, sends back a junk looking for him. They get picked up. They put him on the on the boat, and he, Big Mike was so exhausted, it took 10 guys to get him on a boat. They finally get back to the ship. He puts the LT on the deck. He briefs the the, the, the medic, the doc, on, on board, and then he collapses. Now, that, that, that just took a lot out of me just saying that story. Imagine being on that in that situation. Imagine how 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 imagine the overwhelming sense of fear or the overwhelming sense of of like oh my gosh what's happening right now going through your mind in that situation. How does how does Big Mike Thornton make it through that? Simple training. He relied on the greatest military training on the planet. He he relied on what he had learned. He relied and he did what he thought he needed to do, and he ended up saving the lives of all those people. Now, for that, Mike was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor, the Medal of Honor, excuse me. And, and that is an amazing story. That is the testament to what true training can give you, folks. Now, what is your level of training? Are you training at that high of a level? Is that your definition of training, to be able to do something like that? I mean, is that what you're, you're capable of? Are you pushing yourself so the next time you're in the combat of life and you're getting pummeled by something, I don't know, cancer or something, you know, are you going to push yourself to come out of that? Are you going to push and elevate your training, bring it up a notch to be able to, to, to endure something at the highest level, folks? Because if you're not trained, you're not going to know what to do. It's that simple. That's what training is. That's the amazing thing about training, that when the more you train yourself, the more you can do. It's really awesome. So I told you this amazing story and how we define training, how we define the idea of training as it relates to living the team life through Mike Thornton in our, in our, in our community, as well as the other Medal of Honor stories, the other great stories of success and, and, and survival and sacrifice in our community. How do you define it? Why, why, is training important to you? Well, let me help you and tell you why training is so important in your life. It's because it, it, it is, is without training, you'll never understand the basics. You'll never be able to create a foundation of operational skill sets. Uh, you'll never be able to understand how to perform on and, and fall back on something that can get you through. Now, don't think, let me tell you right now, training is not just physical training. F training has to do with your mind, it has to do with your body and your spirit. If you're not training yourself in those things. Now, let's think about it. Hey, from the beginning, you were trained on how to eat, right? Heck, my, I'm training my, my youngest daughter right now who's eight months. I call her popcorn because her little head smells like popcorn. It's awesome. I'm training her how to eat. So we got to break up the little blueberries and put it in her mouth. And she's trying to figure out how to pick it up and shove it in her face. So that's training. 
Then you learn how to train, tie your shoes. You learn how to share. You learn how to not to hit somebody, right? Now let's fast forward, shall we? Let's fast forward in life. And, and you know, you have to train yourself to be he- healthy. Now, how do you do that? Are you relying on the same things you've been doing back in the day? Or are you, are you actively incorporating new training models in your physicality, in your healthy state? Are you training yourself on how to eat right? Are you training yourself? An edu- you know, think about education. Think about all the basics you learn going through school, K through 12, and in college, or maybe your advanced degree. Hell, man, that's all training. Or training on your job, training in your life. Think about your relationships. How many relationships have you screwed up because you didn't train yourself after you messed up the one before? <laughs> now, think about your faith. How much training do you have in your faith? How often do you pray hard? How often do you really look at things with an open mind and begin to, to train yourself in your faith, to really to dig down and understand what about your faith or your spirituality or whatever? Where does it come from? You know, are you training in it? Or do you just kind of sit back and rest on your lures and like, I got it, I got it, man. It'll just hit me. I just feel spiritual. I just feel God. Well, guess what? You got to train yourself, recruits. All right. I mean, it's taken me 41 years to get to a place where I feel like I'm just starting to understand my faith. I'm just starting to have that as a powerful tool in my ability to, to think and act and live life to its fullest. So, you know, those are the things you have to think about. All right. Now, also think about your struggles in your life. When, whenever you've struggled and you haven't been able to perform, it's because your training doesn't match what you're involved in. And you fall back, right? And you need, to, you need to reassess and think about your work, your relationships, achieving your dreams. And what are you doing to train yourself to achieve those dreams? Period. I mean, that's it. It's that simple. It's like, all right, I want to have these awesome, wild, open dreams. And I want to be able to be an entrepreneur. Or, or I want to be able to run an ultra marathon or run a marathon. Whatever it is, you got to train yourself to do it. And if you're not training, you're wrong, all right? Training forges your strength physically, mentally, and spiritually, period. And now the cool thing is when you involve your training and your commitment to living the team life, holy cow, stand by, yo. You are going to be able to do things you never imagined in your life. And that's what the amazing thing about living a team life is. You start training with somebody you love. You start training with somebody you care about. You start training. I mean, a a, a happy family is a family that trains together. You know, it makes you feel better. You train, you go into your local CrossFit box. Everybody knows out there how awesome it is to finish the friend next to your best friend or get your personal record on whatever workout, one of the hero workouts you're doing and feel what that feels like inside, man. I mean, that's awesome. It lifts you up. You're high five and you're patting each other on the back. You Wow, nice, man. I think I can take, take another 10 seconds off. Let's do it again. That's what it's about, right? That's amazing. All right. So that's why it's important in your life. Now let's talk about SEAL training, right? Everybody wants to get everybody wants to get all focused on SEAL training because everybody has heard about it. You've watched Bud's Class 234. You've understood that we push ourselves to the absolute limit. So let me break it down. So the end doc in this whole thing is Bud's, Basic Underwater Demolition SEAL Training. And that's a seven-month just kicking the you-know-what. And, and it's broken down in a first phase, second phase, and third phase. So first phase is all designed to just test your resolve. You're doing five physical evolutions in a day. You're running six miles to just eat every day. Plus you're getting hammered. You're doing timed evolutions. You got the instructors in your face. And first phase, the kind of the culmination is hell week. And that's staying up from Sunday afternoon to Friday night. No sleep except for your free. You get about an hour and a half Thursday morning, another hour and a half on Friday morning. So you'll go 96, 97 straight hours without any sleep. And, and you know, meanwhile, you're getting pummeled. Now imagine that. I mean, that's hardcore. That's pushing yourself. What you're doing in this and the whole idea of buds is that you're unlocking the limits that you place upon yourself. And that's the beauty of training, folks. As you get in there and you you like you unlock, you get that click, 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 and unlock a limit. Now you're responsible for the limits you put on yourself. And now that's a great thing about buds is that we force those. We, we literally strap a, 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 a pound of C4 on your lock, your, your emotional lock in your brain and in your heart, and we blow the snot out of it. 
And we prove to you that all the things that you've done in your past, in your life, that you're holding on to, that's protecting you from the fear of the unknown, right? The fear of failure, that it's all hogwash, folks. What are you doing in your life to blow that stuff up? I mean, are you out there pushing the limits? Are you out there putting yourself through your own little hell week? Or, or are you allowing the negative insurgency to force, tr- force you to deal with something on a little OJT, right? A little on-the-job trauma or on the light, o- OLT, on-life trauma, you know? So after you get through that first phase in budgie, move into second phase where you have pool comp and dive phase and you test yourself and you test your confidence underwater and then you move into third phase and you're on the rock for four straight weeks and nonstop around the clock getting hammered. Well, guess what? Then it's perpetual and it just keeps getting harder and harder and harder. There's this big myth out there that once you make it through hell week, whoa, it's all downhill after that. I say and halt knuckles, it only gets harder. And that's what the beauty about our training regimen is. So once you're out of budget, you get to SQT and you're in this robotic mindset and you're like, okay, what, I will do 100 push-ups, whatever you need. But it's time to start thinking. And so after you perform those basics into perfection, now we tar- teach pe- these, young, these young whippersnappers, these young tadpoles how to think, how to think on the battlefield, how to use their training, how to their basic skill sets to adapt, to overcome, to take the limitations of their operations or the environment around them and just explode them to say, yeah, you know, when the op comes on down the line, when you're in your platoon and you're downrange and you're in theater and the in theater commander serves it up to you and puts the, the, the dossier of this high value target in front of you and it looks like an impossible op, you like, yep, we'll do it. No, that's awesome. Yeah, no, no, it's good. We want it. Without even a second thought. Is that what's happening in your training? Or are you whining? Are you sitting there and I, you know, I don't know if I can do that, man. There's no way. There's no way, eh, right? There's no way I can get out there and, and push myself to run 10 miles. Or there's no way I can push myself to run 26. And, and there's definitely no way I could ever do 100. But that's all BS, folks. That's all in your mind. You create your own limitations. So, you know, when when you get through SQT and then you move into a platoon, you have this 18-month workup, and it just focuses you because you you now develop this intuitive spirit in your platoon that the guys next to you are willing to go that distance with you all the time. And so they push you, and you push the guy next to you, and you push them, and you push each other. And the next thing you know, you're ready to deploy and go down range and go into combat and, and start really, you know, stretching out and, and, and taking a hold of what you're capable of, you know. And that's the amazing thing because, you know, if you're not properly trained in the combat, folks, it's too late. It's too late. You can't be in combat and, co- and call time out. Whoa, 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 and halt, please. Give me a minute. Let me let me take a, take a breath here. Take a breather. Stop shooting at me. It's just absurd, right? The same is true in your lives, folks. The same is true in your life today. If you don't get out there and start training and start preparing for the combat of flight, preparing for the negative insurgency, then guess what? You're going to get ate up. You're going to get ate up and spit out because you're not going to be mentally, physically, and spiritually prepared when Murphy is doing a tap dance on your heart. And that's the way it is, folks. So, you know, training is critical. You train like a SEAL. Understand that it, 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 training never ends. you got to perpetually ignite that drive inside you to become better. Now, think about this. I mean, the funny thing is, is our, our, you know, I mean, it, you know, do you think out there that Al-Qaeda has stopped training? Do you think that, that our enemy is just out on the, on the front lines wherever we speak and they're like, oh, we're good? We're good. We don't need to train anymore. No, they're pushing themselves. They're getting better. They're they're figuring out how to become better with different modified weapons and unique things and how to push psychological warfare on people and all kinds of crazy stuff. Well, are the teams back at home right now just sitting on their butts? Or are the special forces ODA teams at home sitting on their butts? Negative. That's silly. So why are you sitting on your butt? Why haven't you changed your training regiment in years? That's a very real question you need to ask yourself. All right, so let's get into the frog logic concept. Like I told you, this is based on my 20 years of personal discovery, you know, really trying to understand about the human condition, what enables us to succeed in any environment, all right? But the key, the kicker to this thing is that I add, I combine 70 years of of UDT SEAL training philosophy with this. I mean, I, I combine 70 years of sacrifices, 70 years of incredible work ethics, and 70 years of training to, to, to my, 
lie the, to the frog logic concept in order so it's 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 understandable for civilians so so, so you can stomach it and palate it so it it, it it can help inspire you or light the fire in your gut to be able to start going above and beyond your known limitations so all right so today we're talking about you know Mission two, living the team life. Mission two, training and how that is appropriate in your life. So let's start with number one, right? The concept one, nobody's born elite. Now, I don't care where you're from, where you've been, where you've gone. I don't care if you, uh, you know, were a division one athlete or professional sports player. I don't care if you're a tier one operator back in the day. I don't care. What are you capable of doing today? I mean, it's, it's, it's admirable, and I love the fact that you've pushed yourself in the past, and, and that's commendable because it proves that you have the intrinsic drive to be great, to do something unique and special, but what are you doing today? Are you resting on the laurels of, of their past, all right? Because it's now. It's, it, you don't want to have this Letterman complex consume you, that you're literally resting on those laurels of your past to, to try and, you know, you know, kind of change your mind and to believe that you're still in that same capacity. You're not. And we all struggle with this is what do we do every day to get up and get and push ourselves to train harder? And you got to find that thing. You got to find and use your team to do it. All right. Now, eliminate comfort zones is the concept, too, in this. Now, what do I mean by comfort zones? And what I call my fir- in my book, Navy SEAL Training Self-Confidence, I define it as comfort zone behavior. So here's the definition. And by the way, you can find that book on, on, on my website, on the web store, on teamfroglogicstore.com. You can buy it on, on iBooks, on Kindle, Nook, Kobo. It's all over the place. You can buy it off Amazon. You know, check it out. Navy SEAL Training Self-Confidence by David Rutherford. So I define it in the book, comfort zone behavior. This is it. Learned emotional and cognitive behavior human beings use to create the physical, mental, and spiritual boundaries in their life that protect and mitigate from feeling and thinking about logical or illogical fear. Now, that's what we do. From the moment we're little, itty-bitty, little, itty-bitty kids, we start having developing comfort zone behavior. And that comfort zone behavior inhibits us from, you know, really pushing ourselves or anything. And then, then it kind of grows as we get older and to the point where we're playing alarm clock tag on the day we're supposed to get up and go for that run. Or we're, you know, we're not, we're not go signing up for the gym or we're not pushing ourselves mentally at work and, and volunteering for new programs because we just don't want to come outside our comfort zones. We don't want to take the risk of life and, because we're afraid what might happen. Right. We're not using logical understanding that 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 taking those risks and pushing yourself and getting rid of those comfort zones is the stuff that's going to help you train better or faster or more important. And more importantly, it's going to help you achieve your dreams and your purposes in life. That's huge, folks. That's huge. All right. So you've got to eliminate that comfort zone behavior. All right. All right. So the third one is you got to train hard. You, you, you got to train hard, folks. That's the deal. If you're not training hard, then you're wrong. Now, what do I mean by training hard? All right, here's a question for you. Here's a question for you. When was the last time that you trained in PT or something like that, and you basically were like, all right, I just finished your ass exercise, and you're like, splat. When was the last time you did that? When was the last time you were like, you arched that back and your eyeball was busting out and you looked at your stomach and it was upside down and inside out and you looked down at the ground beneath you and there was something on the ground that looked like an alien life force and you're like, oh, oh, and your bottom lips quivering and your stomach and your knees are shaking and all you want to do is drop on the ground and start crying. When was the last time you did that? Was it a week ago? Was it a month ago? Or, or was it so long ago you've forgotten? Ask yourself, how long ago was it? Because if you can't remember the last time you pushed yourself physically, mentally, or spiritually to that level, then you're wrong, folks, because you're not testing your resolve. You're not testing your ability to understand what your limits are. You're, you're staying in this teeny little box, this teeny little box in your life. And you don't want to get out of that box because you don't want to feel what a, that feeling of puking feels like. Now, for all you who have done it recently and you, you understand that, that, that twist and turn and unbelievable feeling, you know what I'm talking about because once you get your head together and you shake it off I, 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 and you, you, know, you get your sea legs back beneath you, you understand that, that you feel elated. You feel alive. You're ready to do something unique and go bigger and go better and go stronger because now you know where that limit is. Now, next time you can push it a little bit further and then a little bit further and a little bit further and a little bit further. And the next thing you know, you're doing things you never thought were you could dream of. 
That's training, folks. That's the beauty of training. Now, you should be doing that all the friggin' time. All right? Train hard. All right. Now, here's the last one. And I'm going to break it down for all you knuckle draggers out there just like me. And this took me a long, long time to figure out. Here's the deal. Ready? Concept four in, in, in training, mission two training in team life, is training never ends. It never ends. Period. Don't think there's ever going to be a time where you cross this magical finish line. Like you go over the mountain pass, over the mountain pass, and you cross this magical finish line. Then all of a sudden you're like, oh, 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 I have made it. I have achieved everything in life, and I no longer need to train. I can just sit in my mansion in Aspen and with my Bentleys and my bank accounts offshore, and I can just sit and meditate because I am the man. And halt, Knuckles. That doesn't happen. Because when you get to that level, it's time to go to another level. And time to get better or to share that information by training others. That's right. There, You have a moral responsibility. You have a, 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 a literally a, a spiritual responsibility to share what you have learned and how hard to train others. I mean, that's a huge component. The training never ends. If you're not training yourself, you better be training someone else. That's the team life. So I know you dig it. I know you hear yourself. I know you're thinking about this. I know, but are are you doing it? And if you aren't, if you really are answering those questions like, man, I'm not doing this at all, then you're wrong, folks. Then you're wrong. So let's go through those concepts one more time, shall we? All right, concept one, again, you have got to understand that nobody's born elite. And in that if you do get to an elite status, it's going to end. It's going to come to a time where the, the skill sets that you understand are yesterday's under, uh, uh, understanding. It's yesterday's tactics. And the negative insurgency is still training. Concept two, eliminate those comfort zones. Get rid of that comfort zone behavior that is devastating you. All right? Disrupt your life. Cause some chaos and start training hard. That's right. Concept three, train hard. Get out there, folks, and start puking your brains out. Start challenging yourself mentally to where your mind is vomiting all over itself. All right. Challenge yourself spiritually to where you feel like you've you've prayed so, so hard that God has to hear you. Now, it's cool because God always hears us, but, you know, put the effort in. Get down on those knees and, and really dig deep and say, Lord, please, I need you. I need you. Do you hear me? I am in this situation. I need you. And better yet, get the guy next to you. Bring him over on next to you. Get on his knees and have him get down. You guys pray together. Heck, man, every time I'll... Before this show, I'll drop down to a knee and pray. Or every time I go PT, I'll go pray out in the water. Man, it helps. It helps, but you got to train yourself to embrace it, folks. And then last one, training never ends, okay? It just never, never ends. Training is perpetual. It goes on and on and on, and you have to embrace that suck. You have to embrace it, and then you flip it around in your mind just like we do in the SEAL teams, just like we do in BUDS, and just like we do in SQT and and, and deployments and downranges. The fact that we know it's always going to get harder, so we have to push ourselves to be better, period. That's the deal, folks, and that's the frog logic concept. Again, if you want to know more information about frog logic and, and, and find out more about me, please join us at teamfroglogic.com. You can follow me on Twitter, on Facebook, on Google+, on LinkedIn. We've got a YouTube channel out there that we're putting out tons of great videos. Uh, you know, We've got over a million-plus viewers out there. In fact, we're beginning to put these shows, the Navy SEAL Blog Talk Radio, up on. We're filming it right now. We're going to put it up in a few weeks. We've got the other shows coming online so that's really the deal folks you can find me and and then and then also you know this show don't be don't be afraid tune in next week again where we're going to do mission three communication and this is a huge one right well you know comms wins wars is so that's what's going to happen so now you know, I'm going to blow right through the break because I'm on a roll and I feel good. I feel good. I, I think I, I sound good. I hope I do. I hope I'm not boring you. Know, you're asleep or you're on the side of the road. You know, you're passed out. But we, we, we've got a, a special, amazing guest with us, folks. And this guy is one of my closest, dearest friends. He's a training master. He he is, he, you know, he's he's responsible for some amazing things. He's a former Green Beret, former Ranger. He, he, he uh, you know, he created one of the most incredible training programs at Blackwater back in the day. He was, you know, he's trained Hundred, you know, thousands of people and and firearms tactics and and mine and and now you know he's got this incredible training company called the Adventure Operations Group. Check them out online, Adventure 
Group.com, where he develops this really significant high-end, you know, training to help people embrace the next level of, of pushing themselves by using a special operations focus and a determination. Man, you can't beat it. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome to, to Navy SEAL Blog Talk Radio, my close friend and training master, I want to welcome Brad Christian. All right, Brad, are you there, buddy? Yeah, I'm here, Dave. How's it going? Holy cow, dude. I feel like uh, my training is paying off on this show, bud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's sounding great. I would agree. Sure. Well, thank you, brother. So I don't want to waste too much time. I want to get right into this right away, Brad, and, and, and hit you up with the first question. And why do you think training is so important in terms of, of pushing ourselves to the next level? Well, it really, and you've hit on so many important points already, but really it, it boils down to it's the price of admission or achieving uh, elite level performance, right? I mean, it's what Amen. everyone has to go through to to be able to call yourself part of something special, and it it, it, it it's what makes you know seals and green berets and, and and other soft units capable of that guaranteed level of performance, you know, and and kind of puts you in that position that you just talked about, where you sort of laugh at these incredibly hard missions as they're handed out to you and you, there's no hesitation. Yes, we'll do that. Um, you know, when do we start? And it, it's funny when you look at the, at, at the history of soft and, and, and some of the, the, you know, the legacy of, of the commando missions and how difficult they were. And these guys just, just took them on the chin. Like they were nothing because they were trained. You know, it teaches us, like you said, how to push ourselves, how to push your teams, you know, the positive attributes of it are uh, obviously, keeps us from getting stressed out and allows us to be adaptable and shows us how we, we react under pressure and how our teams react under pressure. And most importantly, I think training builds trust in oh, yourself and awesome. your team and the mission. And, uh, and that's the bottom line. That's amazing. I'm I'm so stoked that you brought that up, and and that trust is a big issue. And and when you're living the team life as as you and I have in so many different operational environments, and now especially as as you know fathers and and husbands and friends of one another, you know that trust is everything. It's such a huge part. What have been some moments in in your training past, whether as an instructor or as a, a trainee yourself? Where your you know your trust in yourself and your trust in the training have have been in question maybe and how have you pushed through? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I think uh, you know as I look back, probably every time I can say I had a, a a moment of doubt or question, it was when I was embarking on something new or pushing myself into an into a new uh, path, my comfort zone. Right. I mean, I think there was certainly. Uh, many portions of of uh, the Q course and, and special forces training where you were kind of on your own. I mean, there wasn't there wasn't a lot of false motivation. Uh, it was literally okay. Here's the task. Go, and you instantly have to, you know, sort of dig deep in yourself and know that you're trying to be a part of something great. That brotherhood that you talk about all the time, um, and then later. Uh, I think as as an instructor, you know, even early days when I became an instructor, I mean, it's a huge responsibility, and and there's a lot of trust placed in you as a as an instructor and a trainer to do it right and to give the right kind of of guidance and mentoring the people that are going to use the skills to go on and do important work. Uh, and so, uh, again, I think as I early in my in my career as a trainer. You, know, you kind of have that doubt of, am I going to measure up as an instructor? And it's some of these elite schools that, that we've all been to and, and that we you know, have the opportunity to work at. And then you look around and you realize you're a part of a team again of, of other instructors and, and you learn and you find people that, that you look up to. And that's what helps create or that's what helps eliminate that doubt, uh, realizing you're not ever, ever alone and you're, you're always a part of a team. So that's how I got through those moments of uh, – when your trust is, is challenged. That's awesome. Awesome. That's awesome. Now, uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot of people that come and pay attention to the show right now and, and they want to, they want to know, okay, listen, I'm, I'm not going to go through seal training. I'm not going through the Q course, 
but uh, but there are things that I can do in my life, but I'm not sure what they are. I'm not sure where to go. And I and I know Brad that you've been a, a kayak uh, instructor out there. I know you've done a, a lot of adventure training. In fact, you were just out in in like uh, out in um, uh, climbing the Grand Tetons out there with your buddy Breton at at Exum Partners and uh, climbing the guys, one of the best climbing guides in the world, and you're really testing yourself. Uh, in these other kind of adventurous environments or these outdoor natural environments, you know, is that the only place that people need to go to get this type of training to make themselves better physically, mentally, and spiritually? Or are there other places too that people can turn to or, or, or other opportunities that exist for people to get that same kind of, you know, feeling that we got in those specialized programs? Can civilians, where can civilians go to get it? Yeah, I mean, I think really the first thing to realize is that that most people stop training hard after a certain point, and I think that's the part you're hitting on, and that it's very impo- it's very difficult to push yourself by yourself. So part of what uh, you know we focus on at Adventure Operations Group is offering people a chance to go through that that deliberate pipeline process of individual assessment, individual training, incorporating that into a team. Uh, and then accomplishing a mission, and then living with soft focus, like you and I have talked about for so long, which is really just a mindset based upon elite performance, right? And and so I think Adventure Operations Group is certainly a great resource. Frog Logic is a great resource. The great thing about America is there is no shortage of places to go push yourself, whether it's on a range, <laughs> whether it's out in the mountains with Brenton doing Amen. some crazy stuff in the Tetons, whether it's on a river. Uh, or, or whether it's it's you know working with your local church group or, or just doing something with your team, your corporate group, um, because I think we all, as you pointed out today, training never ends, and and we all can improve and get better. Well, well, it's funny that you bring that up because there's so often that that I'll go out there and I'll meet with these you know cl- corporate clients and and I'll give these speeches whether on self confidence or embracing fear or living the team life and I'll get them and then people will come up and they'll go you know how do we find that in our own lives where do we go and and it's like they're people are searching for that one unique little spot and and I was stoked that you brought up the fact that you know you can go find it at your local church if you don't go to church man go find it go volunteer for a nonprofit organization or go volunteer at your kids school find it somewhere push that training regimen to you know come out of your comfort zones and and you'll find it and it's so funny you know the human experience the human condition is really this this it's comprehensive and you can't just be awesome at crossfit and and suck at your personal relationship skills and you can't be a, a, a awesome at personal relations and and have a horrible spiritual drive or whatever you know i mean so it really is this this comprehensive approach now now the one cool thing that that you know Brad that really ins- inspires me about you is that you know you you have you know in what you do aside from adventure operation group you're you know you're you manage a lot of people and a lot of people that are in stressful environments and a lot of people so when they approach you what kind of advice to you do you give them i mean what do you say to them saying hey you know, uh, I understand that you're struggling with this thing. Here's a place that you can go to figure it out. Like, is that what, is that kind of how you break it down? You, you, you redirect people to, you know, get some training. Yeah, it's tough. You know, I think what's lacking in a lot of corporations is, is persistent sustainment training, certainly for, for mid-level employees and, and, uh, those not, not high up on the, uh, the management, uh, uh, ladder. So, what I do to try to motivate both myself and, and my team is to encourage maintaining uh, a, a triple mission focus, if you will. And, and at any given time, you know, one piece of that mission circle is going to be a little bit more important than others. But you've always got your organization, your team, and yourself. And there are three different missions uh, sort of com- competing for, for, for attention at any one time. And I find that when people, especially in my, in my environment, really start struggling, it boils down to get yourself centered back on what your individual mission is and how that plays into our team's mission and how that plays into the organization's mission. And that kind of helps keep me and, and my team sort of based in, in some perspective because things do get incredibly hectic, not only in, you know, in our organization, but every company in America right now is facing incredibly hectic and 
in uncertain times. And people have a responsibility to stay focused, to stay focused on the mission uh, and understand which mission they're focused on at, at any given time. That's awesome, man. I mean, I, you know, I get constant questions. In fact, we've got questions today coming online and on Facebook about about that very thing. You know, people work on teams that aren't team oriented or aren't living the team life. And so they're struggling trying to find out how to kickstart that 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 whole thing, how to in, initiate people's interest in being working more as a team in the face of bureaucracy or the face of tenure or whatever it is. And, and, you know, so people are constantly looking for it. And, and you know, I always go back to the, the, the thing that's saying, hey, man, if you have exhausted all of your possible ideas or training methods or whatever, and it's just not working, then, hey, man, there's a lot of opportunity out there. Now, people think, well, you don't know you're not in a real workforce. And, and trust me, I do know. I do understand how scary it is to change careers, you know, older in life. And, and, and I know, but sometimes that's what it takes. It takes that disruption. It takes that that total becoming uncomfortable and pushing yourself into a new environment. So would you recommend that for people, Brad, who, ha- who aren't happy with where they are in life? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I would, for everyone listening out there, I, I would also recommend uh, going to Frog Logic, contacting Dave uh, for some coaching because, you know, there are, there are plenty of people to help and none are better or more qualified than Dave to teach you how to push yourself into a, into a new limit, uh, get yourself focused, uh, on on living a better team life. So get some coaching, get some mentoring, and and decide that you're going to do this and do it. Awesome, you're the you're the man, dude. I thank you so much, Brad. I, you know, it's always a pleasure to have you on. You really understand the depths of training. You really understand, you know, what it takes to get people up and going and to embrace the team life. So I, I really appreciate you having you on, uh, Brad. If you guys are interested, go to adventureoperationsgroup.com or check out Brad's blog. He writes these incredible blogs every so often about these very principles, these very ideas. So, Brad, man, have a great weekend, brother. Thanks for calling in, man. You bet, Dave. We'll talk to you soon. You, you got it. Out. All right, so let's go to some of the questions for online right now. So we've got run one that came in and it says, how much of your training is structured and how much is, is by feel or instinct? And I got that one on Twitter. So this is a great question, all right? We have to have structured training, okay? Now, in that, in that, because the structured training, it was it teaches you. It teaches you the basics. It teaches you how to, you know, get a foundation that you can always fall back on. And without those basics, you're kind of wandering aimlessly, just picking at little things that are inspire you here and there. And it, it really that instinction, that that instinctual drive comes after you've fortified a certain training regimen. So you know, start with the basics. Pick pick anything. Pick one training regimen. That's either for your 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 body, your mind, or your in your spirit. Put one for each, and then start with that, and then build on that, and and you know change and evolve. That's that's a that's a good question. All right. Um, one is how do I hate running? How do I make it a fun habit? All right. Listen, maybe running's not your deal. Maybe you ought to try swimming. Maybe you ought to try uh, biking. Maybe you ought to try mountain climbing. Maybe you ought to try getting out and doing something else. BMX, bike racing, I don't know. Pick something, all right? If, if you hate something and it really just, and you've tried every single thing that you can do in order to increase or improve your training, then go to something else, man. There's a lot of opportunity in the world to train. You just have to be willing to try something out of your comfort zone, all right? That, that was a great question. Here's the next one. How how do you train your students academically so that they learn the important facts in limited time with limited resources? Now, it's cool in the SEAL teams because we've got a captive audience, right? We've got people that really want to be there. So we can literally jam that fire hose in their mouth, open it wide open, and have them consume at a high rate of fire, right? Well, it's very troubling because you look at modern education system and you look at the appalling dropout rates that we're seeing across the board, and, and most especially, which is scary, in middle school. What it is is these kids are coming in, and because they're not being entertained like they would be playing their Game Boy or PlayStation, they're bored. Well, guess what? Suck it up. It's your, you're accountable to learn those important facts. You're accountable, right? And if you don't like it, it's too bad. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the problem. I mean, there's a certain way things have to go. You have to play the game to get to a certain level. And then once you're at that level, you can decide how you want to live your life. But until you're through that, you are accountable, folks. You know, and if it doesn't suit you, hey, go, good luck. Go find another way to do it. Find a different atmosphere to train in. 
but but it really it comes back to you, all right? And limited resources, I say hogwash. Try Khan Academy. Try uh, Coursera online. Uh, there's so many options for people to learn and train out there. I mean, you can literally jump on the Internet and have five different training regimens for yourself within a, a six-hour period of just a little bit of research, folks. You know, heck, turn on YouTube. Watch any video out there, and you'll get some kind of training, all right? So start there. Okay. All right. So now let's go let's go over here to Facebook and check out here. All right. This is one of the best questions I've had so far to date. And it goes, does Barry Manilow know you raided his wardrobe? Now the fact is, I, I Barry Manilow does not know. In fact, I, I found a very distinct part of his closet that looked like he hadn't gone to in a lot of times. It was the part of his closet that didn't have sequins, that weren't any of his show closets. It was mostly just his, his Hawaiian shirts and his tiger stripe shorts. So I took him. I don't think he's gonna mind. I think I'm good to go. So that's a great question. I appreciate you guys writing that one in. All right. The next one is how do you regain your mental edge again and again? Uh, when training has come to almost a complete stop and you feel like you, you've lost your motivation, your sense of urgency, your intrinsic drive to move forward, that depression has kicked in. Your fear is overwhelming you. How do you kickstart it? Listen, that's one of the hardest things you can do, folks. By far, one of the hardest things that you can do is kickstart it on your own. So what you do is you tap into a person that you love, that you care for, and you respect, who, who believes in training, who gets it, who understands the necessity, and tap into them. Just do their training regimen for a week or two weeks or a month, better yet. It takes literally, it takes most people 60 days to really develop some core habitual behavior that will change your whole life, all right? So jump on board with those people for 60 days, folks, and you will start to accomplish. You'll get back in the mind scene, you'll accomplish some things, and you'll feel great about yourself. So that was an awesome question. I really appreciate it. All right, all right. So there you have it, folks. There you have it. There you have some amazing ideas about training. We talked today about we defined it, and I told you the story of Mike Thornton. If you really want to see an amazing thing, go you know go to YouTube, look up Mike Mike's story, read his accommodation. Just amazing. And remember, there was no way he could have ever done that without training. And I talked about it. in your life why training is important because it gives you momentum. It gives you drive. It puts forward motion into your life and makes you feel good, folks. By, by, by setting in, in the course the, and, and lacking those basics and performing those to perfection, you have a block to start upon. And when you hit that combat of life and you get knocked on your butt, you fall back on that training regimen and then you build on it with the new information you have from getting hammered. All right. Awesome. Easy day. Then we talked about SEAL training. And folks, I highly re go recommend this. Study this. Look at it. See the way it's broken down. And you'll understand that it comes from that drive internally the want to, to, to forge your self-confidence and to want to be a part of the team life. Then, then we got into the frog logic concept, you know, my, my motivational philosophy out there. And we talked about the four concepts relative to mission two and living the team life training. And that was one, you've got to, that nobody's born elite. And that, and that means today is your opportunity to train yourself to be elite, to reach another level, to be awesome. That's the deal, folks. And then concept two is you have to eliminate that comfort zone behavior. Just get rid of it. And how do you do that? By being uncomfortable. I mean, it's simple, folks. You got to make sure that you you push yourself to those those next moments by by training hard. And what does that mean? Training hard means the ah, that puking, that pushing outside your known limits, going above and beyond, getting up over what you think you can do, and and, and testing yourself day in and day out. And then finally, folks, that training never ends. Ha ha! Training never ends, folks. It goes on and on and on. You will never hit that that imaginary finish line where ha oh, oh, ha oh, ha, you're done, and you can hang up your training shoes or whatever you want to call it, and you're done because it just doesn't happen. And that's the beauty of life, that you can always train, you can always be better. You can every day's a learning day, every day's a day for you to get better. All right, woo. That's awesome. So I just want to thank everybody that's it been helped me in my life training, my buds instructors, all my coaches, my mentors at SQT, the Brotherhood, everybody I knew in the teams, all my coaches in the past, my parents, my wife, my kids, everybody for helping me train. I really appreciate it, folks. So don't forget to tune in to next week to uh, at 0930 on Saturday mornings live to Navy SEAL Block Talk Radio. And next show will be Team Life Mission 3 Communication. All right, folks, and then check out TeamFrogLogic.com. 
We got a new T-shirt available this week. Uh, you won't, you'll love it. It's the Team Life T-shirt. Don't miss it. All right, folks. Thank you for listening. I'm your host, David Rutherford, Navy SEAL, motivational speaker, behavioral training specialist, author, and life coach. And it's my mission to help you embrace your fears, forge your self-confidence, and learn to live the team life. And one last thing, don't forget, I'm your new swim buddy. Let's get motivated. Out!